In 2014, the annual Bilderberg Conference was about to take place in Copenhagen, Denmark. I know that this secretive, illustrious gathering has a huge influence on the global political dynamics, so together with two friends I decided to drive to Copenhagen to find out what you can witness as a spectator at the scene of the meeting and how you can interact with the people that are present there. So we're in Copenhagen. On site, this is the Marriott Hotel in the background, where allegedly the Bilderberg Conference is taking place. We are standing on the protest area, and you can see there are not too many protesters there, but maybe we can start a riot nevertheless. So have you, have you seen anybody uh, yeah, already? we've seen Queen of Spain. Um, we've seen Ed Balls, the British uh, Shadow Chancellor. Um, seen James Wolfenson, um, Henry Kissinger, we got a picture of him driving in. So yeah, we've, we've seen, probably identified a dozen or more attendees already. So the, the plan for the following days is to stay here and scream a bit at them? What do you think? Um, no, we're going to try and catch them on the loose, as you said. If they go for excursions and walkabouts, then we'll be here to chase after them. <laughs> so we're not just going to stay here and look at the hotel, it's pointless. But yeah, we're going to be doing a few different things, hopefully. Yeah, maybe some, maybe some screening, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, it's a part of the fun. And maybe some energy healing. We just missed some energy healers who are calling upon all the angels to, yeah. to, to make a difference. All kinds of different people here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really a circus. It's amazing. Yeah. But it's good that there's some, some kind of an awareness of, of this going on. I'm grateful for everybody who's here, and well, at the moment it's not many. So. Yeah, it's a fun time. There should be a lot more people on Saturday. It should be... A, two three hundred i think so that's the big day although we talked about the more spiritually inclined demonstrators in a rather disparaging way it should be noted that it's in fact commendable that they had both an awareness of the conference and the motivation to come to denmark to contribute their time and energy if you do not feel like singing mantras like these people did well don't do it but i do invite you to emulate their dedication and come into Bilderberg to be present and make a stand this is also what my intention was. I wanted to be there and show at least one senior Bilderberger in person that I as a free human being refused to acquiesce to be a pawn in the game of a self-righteous elite. As it turned out, I would have the chance to express myself towards Henry Kissinger as he was driving past me on Saturday. Henry Kissinger is often linked to pedophilia and war crimes, among other things. He also referred to military men as dumb stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy and he said, the illegal we do immediately, the unconstitutional takes a little longer. I decided to shout at Henry Kissinger because I am seriously angered by his inhumane actions and because I wanted to really convey to him in a very tangible way the passion for freedom that is burning inside of me. I wanted to tell him personally and unmistakably about what I think will happen sooner or later. It's interesting to know that the policeman standing close to me while Kissinger drove past did not even give me as much as a bad look. However, soon after this event, two other policemen came to me, visibly excited. They did not seem to be excited because of me, though, but because probably someone told them to confront me. That's what it seemed like, because one of the policemen mentioned that he knew my identity had been checked earlier and that I appeared like a calm and reasonable person. The policeman said that if I wanted to shout, I'd have to go into the protest area at the other side of the street, because they will not allow excessive shouting right next to the hotel which I found understandable. Nobody would tolerate that right next to his or her own property. I promised to stop yelling and without any further complications was allowed to remain in the area right next to the Marriott Hotel. When I mentioned that I yelled because I am very upset with the fact that a war criminal and presumed child molester like Kissinger runs free, the other policemen nodded in agreement. However, other journalists and demonstrators also made some negative experiences with the Danish police. Luke Wodowski, for example, was arrested together with Dan Dix after they confronted some of the Bilderberg organizers inside the Marriott prior to the conference. Luke, so you've been here since I think a couple of days or so. I saw a video where you've been arrested. Yeah. And so you have already had some action here. Oh yes, lots of action. Yeah, yeah I haven't <laughs> followed up on that. So, so you, you were detained but you were released, but it, did anything happen to you in custody or... Just the usual. I mean, they took us in. They tried to say that they're arresting us for possession of drugs. Obviously, we had no drugs. Uh, they took us to jail, searched us, took all of our possessions, said we were being arrested. 
for, quote, suspicious activity, which I don't even think is an official charge or an official law here. So they held us in jail for about two and a half hours. They put us in kind of like an isolation tank, kind of looked like an assail asylum, uh, just total white cement walls and a bench by yourself that you have to sit there for you know, two and a half hours. Um, so, you know, that happened. Uh, oh, but they released me without any charges. So yeah. they didn't press any charges. They couldn't because I didn't do anything illegal. They made up charges to put me there. Right. Yeah. And you, but so you were released, you get, got your stuff back and your footage. Got my stuff up. back. They deleted some footage. Uh, but I guess they saw so many cameras because I had so many on me. They couldn't get into all my cameras. They could only get into one. And that, in that one, I think they deleted one and then they looked around like, crap. You know, we can't really delete everything, but they did delete one. Um, but, uh, we, you know, we were able to get different shots as well. So, okay. you know, we still have some of the footage. So th this year, I don't know how many Bilderberg Conference. Five. Fifth. So, Fifth Bilderberg Conference. So, so, so yeah. what's changed over the years? What's different now? That uh, it all depends on the location and it all depends on the year. I mean, right now, what's, what's most different is it's more of a theater show of insecurity by these guys. There's a lot more protection. There's a lot more security. There's a lot more guns. There's a lot more harassment, intimidation than there was ever before here at this oh. location. Uh, you know, it was, it was bad in, in different locations, uh, but uh, this is one of the worst years when it comes to insecurity, when it comes to the harassment and intimidation. I mean, I, I, you know, I was detained other times at Bilderberg meetings, but never officially arrested on false pretenses like they did to me here. Yeah. But so far here on this ground, I've actually made some pleasant experiences so far. Yeah. With with the policemen, they they all seem to be very well behaved. The people that, that are sitting around right here, I don't know. What, well, what, it depends. Well, well, you go over there, they shove you and they push you and they tell you you can't film. Uh, you get closer. Yeah, you get a little bit closer. They they act tougher and uh, very thuggish. Very listen to me now or that's it kind of thing. So, you know, so, I mean, some of them are nice, but, you know, majority are just very thuggish. I have to say that all the policemen that I have encountered in Copenhagen were nothing but courteous and reasonable. Unfortunately, I do not have any of this on video, as I wanted to talk with the policemen in a more private space, knowing that it's very hard for them to express their opinions openly in front of a camera while on duty. But I think it's important that I tell you about what I've experienced. The first policeman I talked to said that he doesn't want to be on record with his opinion about the Bilderbergers, while adding that he is just doing his job and providing security at this event, indicating to me that he is not happy with the Bilderbergers. I don't think it can be expected of the police forces at the event that they suddenly all start to disobey their orders, but what I saw in Copenhagen was that the police was open to communicate and genuinely interested which was also demonstrated by a policeman reading the Infowars magazine that was laid out in a stack inside the protest zone. The next two policemen I talked to walked up to me and my crew across the river from the Marriott Hotel, where we were recording footage. They asked us about what we were doing, which we explained to them truthfully. We would go on to talk about the Bilderberg group, and one of the policemen confided to us that he was suspicious of what he considered to be two excessive security measures, and they both agreed that it's very odd that mainstream media doesn't cover this event at all. We allowed the policemen to check our ID cards, as it's the law in Denmark to identify yourself when asked to do so by the police. After they found out that we were no terrorists, they let us continue, but only after I had spelled endgame to one of the policemen, who was obviously interested in watching this Alex Jones documentary after I had suggested that he should do so if he wants to know more about the history and the agenda of the Bilderberg group. Then my crew and I were confronted again at the airport on Sunday when we tried to catch some Bilderbergers on their way back from the conference. Airport security made the police aware of us, and so they had to respond. In fact, the very first thing that the policeman who came up to us said was that he was sorry, but that he had to respond when airport security called them to this particular scene. We talked a bit about Bilderberg, and the policeman said they knew about the conference. When I asked Juan if he doesn't find it curious that there is virtually no mainstream media coverage of this event, despite the prominence of the attendees, the policeman answered that the media dictates what is news and what is not, indicating that he is very aware that the mainstream media is not as objective as they claim to be. After some time, the police were requested by airport security to tell us to leave the area, as we had no official press credentials and were not welcome to wait for the Bilderbergers to film them at the airport. 
since the airport is private property and we had no business there other than going after some of the airport's customers, I can understand that. The policeman who communicated this to us also added that it's not his call, but that he had to follow that instruction. We would go on to talk just a bit more about the Bilderberg Group, and I was asked if we got some good shots, which I could confirm. We then departed amicably. I have to say that I thoroughly appreciated the attitude and behavior of all the policemen that I personally encountered in Copenhagen, especially considering their delicate position between the lines of the Bilderberg attendees and the demonstrators, each one that I talked to was respectful, interested in new information and suspicious of the Bilderberg group. I had the same experience with the other Copenhageners that I talked to, many of whom came up to me to find out more about what was going on at the Marriott. Unfortunately, I have none of these conversations on video, but I think it's important that you know that this happened. The Copenhageners would easily grasp the significance of the strange fact that there is no mainstream media coverage of this illustrious event. However, some of the people I talked to would put the idea that Bilderberg is a secret world government into perspective. The policeman at the airport, for example, asked me if it's not somewhat normal that people would want to network and discuss amongst themselves without any press. I think this is essentially true, and many Bilderbergers, especially the less frequent attendees, probably don't see themselves as part of a secret world government, but rather part of an elite think tank that helps them with their careers. According to Bilderberg research for Daniel Estelin, the topics discussed at this year's Bilderberg conference included nuclear diplomacy in regards to Russia, China and Iran, the recent gas agreement between Russia and China and its effects on the US dollar as a reserve currency, the rise of nationalism within Europe that is challenging the power structure of the European Union, the European Union's internet privacy regulations and what they mean for the United States, the rise of cyber warfare, Obama's foreign policy, and the climate change agenda. None of these topics say secret world domination. However, if you can read between the lines and know the background to all these issues, you will know that control and domination is indeed what is sought after by the higher echelons of the Bilderberg Group. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I want to refer you to Endgame, Alex Jones' seminal documentary about the Bilderberg Group, and Thrive, another documentary which connects even more dots. Many of the less frequent Bilderberg attendees are not aware of the information presented in these documentaries and maybe genuinely believe that Bilderberg is just about networking and learning. One of these people seems to be Diederik M. Samson, a politician from the Netherlands, who on three different occasions would come out of the Marriott Hotel to talk to journalists and demonstrators. I will try to get you an interpretation next time, but I'm not sure whether, that's, whether you qualify for that. That's how the human beings you're talking about. I know, I know. Are I'm you? also one of them. Yes. Are you yeah. an attendee? It's a, you, but it's yeah, about how you treat others. You know? I, I, I speak about others. Uh, I speak about you. Why yeah, can't yeah, we yeah, not uh, uh, get the truth about everything. the meeting? I, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I came out here to speak to you. I was, I was talking to her just a minute. You, you, you. But just in general, yeah. the things coming out from Bilderberg, it's, it's not very nice for the normal people, if you want to say it like that. Well, let, let, me, let me say about me personally. I'm a politician in the Netherlands. And as, as we as politicians, we hackle every day with daily business, you know, scandals, little things. And you read about it in the paper. For me as a politician, it's good to have three days, a bit more time, not five minutes for a discussion, but two hours, with people that know about things, scientists, uh, businessmen. You, I'm from the Netherlands, in Den Haag. We don't see them in Den Haag too. I mean, we're ha heckling around with political things. It's nice to be out of there and, and go three days for meetings about new energy, about the future, about what's Europe going to do. How should we get peace in the Middle East? What's Ukraine? What's happening in Ukraine? Those questions are puzzling me and you, I think so, too. You're thinking about the same questions. Then, then why when you, when you talk about depopulation population before, you sounded like a aging, eugenics. Aging. Yeah, but no I'm aging population. People, yeah. But it's the same, you sounded like eugenics. No, no, no. I, 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 if I sounded like that, I'm sorry, but, uh, but because I'm not. Yeah, but it is. No, no, no. What, what, I, what we are talking what about is, for instance, for instance, Denmark or the Netherlands are both countries with a population that gets older and older, which is a good thing because it's, we are more healthy 
we are better not food. We are not no. healthy. We are, okay. we are getting attacked 40 years by GMOs no, no, no. and psychiatric. I know, I know. I, I know you those know. problems, but I uh, know about GMO. Yeah, I know a lot about it. I was a former Aspartame. Greenpeace activist. Yes. Okay. I worked for Greenpeace, so I know a lot about it. Okay. Greenpeace is also a new let's, order. let's agree that I will come back later because I have to get in now. Can, can, back can, we, get, can we get an last. interview with, with you over yeah, here? Like, we'll later later on. Just one last yeah. question I have. If you do so many yes. good things in there, yeah, why is it then open for you? Exactly. You hit the. Head That's why I come out and tell you. The yeah. thing is, I, I, one, one explanation is that um, if you are in a meeting with about 15 or 20 people, and now it's 100 people, uh, I want them to speak freely to me, freely, because then I learn more. And if, and if there's a, and if there's a, oh no, I, I didn't sign anything, I didn't sign anything. But if there's a camera on there, you know, you behave different with a camera, I behave different with a camera. And I don't want people to behave different. So I think it's a good thing that for once you have three hours in a meeting. But I do agree that after such a meeting, people should go out, like me, and tell you what we discussed. But you decided yeah. that we should have fracking and them out. Yeah. No, I, deci I didn't decide that. You decide, but, but would like to just say, was in, in uh, TV at the Bilderberg meeting uh, this year, he, t he told that the fracking uh, issue was spoken uh, uh, about at the Bilderberg meeting. Now we have fracking starting in uh, in uh, northern Jutland, and we don't want the fracking. No, 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 it's no, destroying our water. That's a good discussion. Yeah. Fracking is something that has, I mean, has obvious downsides to the environment. Uh, you get gas out of the ground with fracking, which has obvious advantages, energy, and that's a dilemma. And in the end, a democracy discusses a, a dilemma and decides. It's not a business who decides. You. I, I understand that they want fracking, obviously. They are destroying uh, three, four kilometers down, destroying the earth, and you cannot set it uh, back together. I agree. I, 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 I happen to agree with you on this issue. There's, there's many issues I don't agree with you on, I think, but this issue I agree with you. But to be honest, in the Netherlands, we have 38 seats out of 150. There's 120, 112 other seats, and there's a lot of people that want fracking because they want cheap energy. Cheap energy is something that people like. So that's the dilemma. But not if we... I have to wave you goodbye. You so I love you as a human being, as a brother. Is there, is there any chance? We care about the chips when you talk to But I will, I will talk to you later. You don't tell us what we care about, you bastards. <laughs> In the next video you can see how Diderik Samson kept his promise and came out again to answer more questions from the demonstrators. So what do you think about people who say they're setting the consensus for policy in there? Well, I can imagine that you think so. It's true. A lot of powerful people get together, they don't just chat about. But they do every day. A lot of powerful people get together every day. In every the expense to get there for all those people though. Well, it's not that difficult. It's a, a weekend. So what's happening today then? Is it a leisure day for the... No, members? no, it's a, a, a two hours uh, after lunch. Yes, that's true. Right. You know where they went on the bus? Did the they Beatrix go in the bus? There. Yeah, she went on the bus. Museum. They loaded up. Museum, I think. Museum. Yeah. Museum. Right. So, uh, so were you in the, the meetings about the EU or Ukraine? Yes, yesterday I was. Any positive outcomes? <laughs> no outcomes. And uh, there's no, I mean, it's a free discussion about an exchange of thoughts. And so people why did, who know a lot about the issue, by the way. Why did Ed Balls have a huge bag full of files then, if it's just a discussion? <laughs> well, Is he I giving have, a presentation? No, I have a, I have a big ball of files with me too, because we're yeah. working people. So yeah. um, uh, the work continues while we're here. Okay. So, uh, Did but, you have a presentation about uh, I, renewable I'm, energy? I don't know enough about oh about renewable energy. I should, have, but that's not on the that's not a main topic on the agenda. No. No. What's your favorite topic been so far? My favorite topic, I think it's the uh, discussion about privacy. Really? Yeah, does yeah. privacy exist, or should privacy exist? It should exist, and it's diff more, even it's getting more difficult to to keep it. 
For who? Us or you guys? Well, for me, because you're following me with a you're camera. In the public place. <laughs> yeah, for you, you're in the public place too. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to have a, a look here. Where are we when our uh, uh, emails so. are being Sorry? infiltrated? And you're not very organized. <laughs> you talk to each other. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Sorry? Did you talk about Bitcoin? No. Yeah, did no, you meet Peter Thiel? I saw him. Oh, did you? Yeah. How's he? Well, he should be one of you. I, I, her, hearing from what he had to say, he, had quite, he has quite some libertarian views. He is a, a self-proclaimed libertarian. But no, gov no government, no taxes, no new world order. It's what you love, I guess, isn't it? Well, he's in there, then, because they all disagree with him, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I do. He has I know, I disagree with him. I disagree with he him. He has invested in some uh, projects that are kind of contrarian to his outspoken views. Is so. that true? Yes, it's true. I'm, I'm not... I don't have enough knowledge of him to, to do that, so, to know that. But I heard some views that he said no taxes, no regulation, whatever. It's nice. Why did they let him in then? <laughs> <laughs> because he's invited, I guess, like me. So. Do they vehemently disagree with him then? Too? I did, but there's a few people that don't disagree with him. I mean, it's just so different views. I think it's amongst you too. There's different views about. Hey, is raising taxes good? So, do you believe in a unionized, unionized global system? Sorry? Do you believe in a global system for us? No. Do you think that's more efficient? I, be I believe in cooperation internationally. Mm -hmm. I think you, you do too. Right. Yeah, how, what kind of uh, cooperation? I think democratic governments should cooperate, people mm -hmm. should cooperate, all right, all right, all right. And NGOs should cooperate. <laughs> I'm, from an, uh, I'm, I'm from Greenpeace uh, what, originally. So Why is a lot of the policy made uh, from one place then, in Europe? Here, well, oh you mean Brussels? Yes. No, it's, well, it's, com it's Brussels, but it's also all the capitals. Actually, the problem is that the policy is not always made in Brussels, but it's made in, Ber in Berlin, per Paris, London, Amsterdam, Rome, and they don't agree with each other, like you do too, I guess. Isn't that good to have uh, all these different states and nations butting heads about things? So, because when you have one, one uh, group or individual deciding the future of global economies. That wouldn't be but good, eh? It wouldn't be good, would True. it? True. No. So this is why people are concerned about meetings like this. But on the other hand, if you... Let's take an issue like climate change. You can only f fight climate change as a world community. It doesn't have... Not everyone agrees about the kind of climate change we're fighting. Well, we fight, well let's say we, we talk about rising CO2 levels having a damaging effect on our climate. So what let's we let's assume that we do that. But the ice caps have been increasing in size, actually. <laughs> but it's a scientific nice. debate that's think, not settled yet. All right. We need okay. a carbon tax. So science carbon is carbon. about debate. I know. It's a lot of it's a lot of debate. But can you wait until the science is settled? Can we throw tax money at the we problem? There's no such thing as settled science. No, that's what I mean. So you cannot wait. It's a process. Well, yeah. So we should throw money stolen from taxpayers to try and uh, solve an issue that may or may not be the Who issue. Who agrees with that? Who agrees with that climate change should not be an issue and well, we shouldn't do it? I didn't say that. I said okay. there isn't a consensus on how to fight the issue, whether the issue is man-made, well, whether well, let's, let's assume, let's, money let's, let's can say, solve it. Let's say we, we try to agree on the fact that renewable energy is part of that solution. What about for countries like Africa and India that are still trying to develop and it's too expensive for them to have renewable energy sources when... That's why we should help. That's why we should help each other. That's why uh, that's the, where we started the discussion. That's why the world or community how should do you work help, together. How do you help Africa develop with renewable energy? By making it cheaper. China itself does a good job in that, by the way. So How about regulation? I think it helps. I think it ne it's needed. You need to regulate coal-fired power stations to, in order to become cleaner. And with that, they become a little more expensive, and that makes renewable energy more competitive. Have that's, you read that's the IPCC reports, only the conclusions? I've read most of it, by the way, because really? I was a, a, I'm, I'm a scientist myself, um, so and I work for Greenpeace, so that's, that's why I'm having is more that, than... Is that a good thing, working for Greenpeace? I'm not sure. I, I liked it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people have separated from Greenpeace because of their... <clears throat> agenda <laughs> and the and way it, their agenda evolved. All right, so Greenpeace is now also part of the No, um, people say they, they hold back development, they hold back uh, third world countries with the policies that they're pushing. That's a, that's a good dilemma, that's true. That's a dilemma, so that's also why you shouldn't be too 
Right, let's say you cannot make a radical change. I mean, countries have to develop and they need energy for that. And most of the energy is polluting energy at the moment. You don't think countries Tesla. can develop by being left alone? Yeah. Do you think global, no, governance, global governance is a given when uh, it comes to uh, having success on the environmental front globally? No, no, I don't, think, I don't think in terms of global government, but I do think in terms of global cooperation is the global only way... Governance. Yeah, governance, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, 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 word, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah you, global right word. company. <laughs> Thanks. Global company to oversee CO2 taxes and regulations. Well, I don't think that will work. A company shouldn't be global. I mean, we have now multinationals all over the place. You're filming from one. Uh, so that's 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 a given, but I think uh, governance should be democratic. Governance should be open. And what about private companies, companies owning the planet, or owning the earth? Well, we do we do one question at a time, shall we? What about private companies, or even let's say some country states, owning the planet and the resources and? Privatizing them and taking away from people. Should, we should prevent that. We should prevent that. And in most Western countries, that's due to property rights made by governments, democratic governments. That's a success. And it, it's a problem in, in some countries in Africa. But Africa, this, Africa is the, the richest continent yeah. in the planet. And it still is. Because we, still, we have raped the continent and taken the resources. Yeah. Is there I any opening to give them back their land? Maybe the an analysis is a bit longer if you elaborate it, but I, I, I do agree that that's a big problem and we need to uh, to do the same in Africa as we did here in, in, in with property rights and regulation and trying to get companies. Yeah, the rule of law. But that's see, the, the people, they uh, start taking in some politicians who, like for example Mossadegh in Iran, as soon America comes in and puts in a puppet, you know, um, president to withhold, you know, um, for example, the oil to BP oil in, in, in Iran. I mean, I don't think the, the the U.S. considers the Iranian regime a puppet of them. Oh, but 53 they did with Musa. Yeah, 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 all right. Because yeah, long time. And every time there comes a, a movement within a country where they want to take back their resources, America or the CIA or whoever comes in and tries to hold it. In the, in the hands of the American or the international well, government. That's what democratic governments are for, to prevent such things from happening. And it's not always successful. I mean, every, well, we know the history. Mr. We have a history Mr. of Mr. war. Samson, yeah. uh, you keep saying we and we should help these countries. And I mean, we as a people. We, all right, but um, do you think that has done more harm than good in the past? And maybe we should try to leave these places alone instead of intervening all the time because there's so many unforeseen consequences. That. I'm asking what you think about that. I don't think so. No, I you think agree. we should intervene and impose well, we should the, help each other. what we believe. We but should the help, help each other. But historically, the help hasn't uh, resolved in anything positive. I don't think so. No? It, look at Eastern Europe. I mean, we've sort of helped each other. Eastern and now Europe, Eastern, like Eastern, Russia? No, Eastern Europe, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Russia is just east of Eastern Europe. But uh, <laughs> Eastern Europe itself, I mean, countries like Poland and Czechoslovakia and Hungary, Bulgaria, they, they're rapidly improving right now. They're rapidly improving their living standards, their democracies, not fast enough in some countries, but we're helping each other. The European Union is sort of a a system in which you try to help yeah, each the other. The euro hasn't... The euro's definitely helped everyone, right? No. But nothing helps everyone. I mean, there's no, no such thing as an absolute right and an absolute wrong. You were having Yes. Help. What is the role of Bilderberg in a democratic society? I think it's just a conference like a loads of those conferences where scientists, politicians, businessmen meet each other and exchange views. But isn't that naive? Um, like, no, why, why, so. why would you, everybody's there for their interests? I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. otherwise. But I'm wouldn't. not naive. Everybody is there with its own luggage, yeah. <laughs> its own interests, its own knowledge. And you have the impression that that there's no what. A further inner circle, or no. like uh, there's there's loads of outer circles. You are one of them, yes. <laughs> literally at the moment. Uh, but it's it's. I mean, there's there's loads of places where people meet each other that have different interests. Yeah. This is one of them. I'm not naive. That that's, that's how the world goes. No, that's but, how but you go too. It's media moguls, oil tycoons. It's, uh, well, like it's and, and business and people, elected, yeah, elected and elected politicians, politicians that. Yeah, are responsible to you or to the public? Yeah, but it's you're just, not Dutch. It's, but anyway, it's not. It doesn't feel representative at all. I don't feel. No, but like not every I have meeting. Anything to do with that? But next tomorrow, I'm going. Or yeah, the day after tomorrow, I'm going back to Parliament in the Netherlands. So uh, then I'm I'm in a public place. But I'm yeah. not always in a public place. What what party are you representing? Social Democrats. 
What's your view on the fact that the CO2 comes after the warming periods? Nice. A nice, uh, uh, that's a long disc uh, discussion, but so I think if you... Why, why is it a long discussion? Because it's a long time that you have to look at. But if you look at the data from 1700 to right now, you can see that it's actually the other, right, uh, the other way around. Mm. Sorry about that. What about... There's a few periods in which it, it, it is what you said, what so warming the and then CO2. But it's, uh, Do you it's, think it's, in, a, it's, it's now a scientific discussion, I'm sorry. But <laughs> it's influencing each other, so it's... Um, it's a circle. What about so, the CO2 rises, it warms, and it creates more CO2 because of tundra melting, etc. That happened in the past. That's happening right now. The Carboniferous period, they had the lowest amount of CO2 and the hottest uh, climate, so there can be a completely direct link in there. No, it's it's, it's uh, nice. It's I mean I I know those discussions. Yeah. It's okay. nice. What about the Dutch royals uh, being represented here? What what do you feel about royalty coming to a meeting with uh, elected officials? When we, as uh, European my, people, my, uh, have normally been yeah, raised in the culture that uh, our my, royals my are just are, meaningless, uh, yeah, I know. But uh, my country is, uh, is of our they countries. are, they are. In the Netherlands, Why are they the royal family has a symbolic. Like you. <laughs> no, no, they, they meet, they meet, they're part of society. I meet the queen sometimes, not too often, and you can meet her if you want to. Can we? Uh, I, I was yeah. a royal guard one, so I have met the Danish queen myself. That's However, what I mean. I, I do think that it is wrong for royalty to be in a meeting with elected representatives and so many others in such a closed forum. I meet with uh, the queen or the king. We now have a king. She's now our princess. I know, I know she was. So, uh, we now, um, and I meet once in a while with the king, which is always the closed meeting. There's never anything said about it and it's nothing to do with Bilderberg. It's every, every two months because we have a constitutional monarchy uh, it's different complex and I'm, I'm not in real favor of it, but we have it. It's the same structure in Denmark. Same structure in Denmark, same structure in Sweden. In Sweden it's a, li a little more symbolic. Uh, but now in the Netherlands the monarchy hasn't anything to say in, in, in the democratic process. Nevertheless, the monarchy is part of the constitution. I'm part of the constitution as an elected member of parliament. So we have to meet each other some Monarchy ha constitution somewhere. kind of an oxymoron, isn't And it? I can yes. tell you the discussions are not changing the world. But you can see why from the outside it looks a bit suspicious. Well, it does for the whole Netherlands, but the Netherlands are used to it. Denmark is used to it. I think Spain is used to it. I don't think they're used to it. I think yeah. people, they get very, very shocked when they hear that royalty are meeting with power brokers yeah. in such a close How form. do you reconcile? They do every day. People don't know. But they do every but day. But they how, do is every that month. A, how is that yeah, a justification of it? Prime Minister, who then is now, you know, appointed to all kinds of different jobs and they... Is he? Is he? And it's Oh, Rasmussen, yeah. But, I mean, you see these people, they're doing these things, they're going to war there, you know, just see, like, these people are, like, not a part of us, they're having their own little club where they're but doing their no, I, I, I can understand you think so, but, for instance, for NATO, the appointment of NATO, the NATO commander, no, it's not the commander, the Secretary, uh, Secretary yeah. General, thank you, um, <laughs> is, is done by all 28 members of NATO, and they're all 28 governments. Uh, and in this case, they're all 28 democratically elected governments. For every nation. So you're, say, you're saying it is very small, like mine, from the Netherlands, but we all have a say in it. That's they a democratic. They came to Bilderberg before they became NATO. No, no, no. They, so Rasmussen was a prime minister become, before he became yes, NATO. Is there Bilderberg membership? I, I'm, I'm attending the meeting. Attendee. Yeah, attendee. Yeah. yeah. So does Bilderberg have an influence in picking NATO members? I don't think so. I don't think so. Grooming. Jens Stoltenberg is now the new to be appointed NATO Secretary General. I'm not sure whether he was on this so, list. But so you think Bilderberg's think uh, supposed function as a king maker function is, is, is a myth? I think it's uh, a myth, yes. Why is I, the mayor I think. Atlanta? I mean, there's so many meetings like this. So many. So if there's kingmaker meetings, uh, there's other candidate meetings. What about now? Connie Hedegaard and the fact that she is now the... Uh, the spread, they walk, you know? Sorry, Dave? They change the government of the country. They can move the spread like they have done in Italy, you know? Yeah, but it's only... Oh, right. To send away to school, you know? Well, I'm not sure whether some, was the worst I'm, I'm not sure whether somebody the moved you know, the spread. No, no one. Financial markets refused no, to lend money. They have done that. They, they? They, they came in Italy just to do that. No, but that who's moment. they? In that moment, you know, you can read what uh, everybody knows. 
in this moment. What happened that time? But I, I wasn't one of them then, I mean, because I don't families. know. They the moved. Rothschilds, for example, or the Rockefellers, they are like very powerful families who have some very influential uh, and that's why we need governments to oversee banks and to regulate banks. Yeah, For instance, in the banking union. Bilderberg? Who Sorry? oversees Bilderberg? Who oversees uh, all your talks? Well, basically, Bilderberg is not. Bilderberg is a is a meeting in there. I, I'm walking outside. You oversee me. Well, not the Dutch people oversee me. And, and there's other politicians inside that you can vote for or against. And to a certain degree, only they're very. Like in Denmark, they've made laws now, so we can't really look into what they're doing. They're, is that correct? Is that true? Yeah, often it's called in Denmark. So they make more and more laws to put a bigger and bigger distance between the people and the people. Then you should throw them away if you don't like it. Yeah, it no doesn't seem to be working. Uh, Why not? Every every four years you have an election. Yeah, but wow. We don't choose, wow. we are yeah. able to vote they don't for. speak about serious things so in the election. Well, then, the but, but, but you know what you... Ear, but in that moment but you're, inside, a, you're a person with... Something like for the you can vote. People. You can vote. You know what you think is important. Ah, yes. So you yes, vote for you what you think is important. If you look at history, voting has done a great justice to the people. I don't think that the Danish they vote to send their son to the American wars, to die in Afghanistan. I don't think so I either. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Many, ma many boys, they died. I know. Because someone who to become secretary of NATO. I don't, th I don't think so. I don't think that was the reason. I don't think that was the reason. Please. Oh, George Bush, uh, uh, his uh, assistant uh, later on admitted that he's together with Anders Fogh Rasmussen had discussion uh, to give him this uh, Okay. Position in NATO. But you had, in, we, in had, we had, sim join the, the we had, we had, well, we had similar discussions in the Netherlands with Secretary General uh, yeah. Jaap de Hoopscheffer. He was a Dutchman. Yeah. But that's a discussion you have. I mean, there's always people who think or have good reasons to think that this was but that, that, a, uh, something behind it. But and then yeah. you have a, then you have a democratic discussion. But and I, and I, if you don't, if you don't agree with it. You sent the politicians away but that, had, that did it. That's, oh, that's how it works. Out, but this One million people on the street demonstrating into the But there's, there's 90 million Britons. So yeah, I'm sorry about... Uh, uh, in the end... One million on the street, you know how much that is. Well, One in million the, on the street. And then they had an election. Yeah, but nothing happened. No, it is not true. Labour lost. Yeah, but partly because of the... Uh, Partly you because of the Iraq war. No one went to jail. No one was, you know... Uh, Maybe, if, if, but that's, that's different. If you don't agree with somebody, listen, he listen. doesn't have to go to jail. But it's proven that... The, uh, it yes, they have to go killing, to jail. For, killing thousands of people. If they do something dead. wrong in, in, the in the the criminal court. The, the Danish army has handed out people to the Danish military that later on has been tortured and sent to Guantanamo Bay. If that's that is a yeah, direct yeah. violation of the law. UN law. And then a judge should judge about that. Yeah, we are, but, but, we but are no, a democracy. But no court will take them, these people to Why not? I don't believe court. you totally we have believe tried that. I don't believe that you're that naive. The judge will not take this court up because he's now the, the NATO general secretary. No, no, no. I think, I think, and I mean, as a politician, I have to be careful about the court yes. because we are not only a democracy, we are also a, a justice system. Yeah. So, and politicians shouldn't interfere with courts. So if you go to the court and you say, I have somebody here but who did something wrong in the criminal justice but we, but system, then several, he should be prosecuted. Several, several people have tried to prosecute Mr. Hans Christian and uh, That's lovely. <laughs> who are you from? <laughs> who are you from? You can keep it if you want to. Who are you from? Why did I, I ask all kinds of I, I answer all kinds of questions. Now you do. Can can I ask you a okay. question about policy making? Uh, can you confirm or deny if Bilderberg is part of policy making process uh, transnationally or multinationally speaking or global governance, if you will, is this part of the policy making process in your yeah. view? I deny I deny the fact that there isn't the policy making process as such, but Consensus. Going in there learns me I something. I, I, I'm, I'm, you, you I'm going fit, out of there with certain narratives. Yeah, right? I, I go out of there with new information. Well, perhaps I can tell you. I can. I can, the I can tell you. I go out of here with new information. I'm a politician. I take all kinds of information from so all kinds of why, parts of society. Why have they Inside that? that hotel, outside the hotel, here on this why parking did, lot, why did they send and then I go home and I I decide. I what, mean, what to vote in, and I think I use some of the information you gave me, uh, or you. So institutional learning. 
uh, process. I mean, it's a, it's a process. It's politicians should be accountable and should try to become better every day. I so like that's why optimism. I go to a meeting in which I learn new things, for instance about privacy and about the way we gather information about each other. I learned a lot about that. Are they trying to uh, improve privacy for citizens? I think you, with all those cameras here, know a lot about intrusion of privacy. Well, look this at, is a public space. This, this well, is a yeah, public space, true. but our privacy <laughs> being, is being intruded when cops break on. down our doors, when we, have, yeah, uh, when we have... No, 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 but I, I was just, I was just joking about the fact that there's a drive. load of cameras but here. We don't think it's a joke. We're really sad that we don't see that as a democracy. No, it's not. Uh, that's really not democracy. You no, it's not. No, but you are not democracy either. You you feel democracy. I mean, you're, want, you're part want, of democracy. We don't, we don't want democracy. We want freedom. We want a democracy republic. Democracy is not freedom. It's slavery. Since when is democracy? I mean, I, I have because to disagree with you strongly that democracy and freedom is something that is counter. Uh, that it is has not been. It has been for a very long time because I, if the majority I, I, votes, I, I, if the majority votes for somebody system. to go to jail, that's innocent. It's, that's it's, not. That's not freedom, is it? Right? You and Peter Thiel good. Good. Find so, some common sense. Or yeah. Not. If you have, if you have a republic and you have certain inherent rights that are granted to you by nature or God or whatever, but it's also reinforced by a um, a document which is adhered to instead of having monarchy working with democracy somehow. Um, the, democracy isn't the you know the, the milestone perfect. of freedom, is it? No, it's not perfect, but I think it's a it, it's a, nece a needed piece of the puzzle to create freedom for everybody. One piece of the puzzle. We need loads more of that. We so need ol laws. Oligarchy we need is the answer. Huh? <laughs> oligarchy is no, the answer. No, I don't think there's one answer. What do you, what you, just what do you no, think No, I think about democracy is a, is a very important piece of the puzzle. It's ruled by oligarchy or what? A democratic no, republic. By you. What do you think about ruled a republic, republic system? Sorry? What do you think more of a republic system? I, I where, like it. where democracy can't overrule certain uh, rights, like the right to your privacy, right to life. But, but why, who's then overruling something? No, because nobody. if you, if in a democracy, if you do vote for yeah. something democratically, but in a republic, then the majority. You vote for a president. Yes, there's certain things you should be able to vote for in democracy. But with a republic, you should, you can't vote for certain inherent rights. Inherent and our, rights. So, no, no. so you can't vote for a, a war, an aggression, because that is against somebody's rights. That mm -hmm. is, that should not be a democratic process. That and who decides be, then who goes to war? Exactly. Yeah, but who? who? In your system. There shouldn't be wars. Well, that's right? nice. Yeah, I like that. There shouldn't I like that. be. Like war. <laughs> <laughs> because if we fund, if we, I like that. We what can't fund war. No, no, no. I, I know, but I also uh, maybe. A more direct it's, it's a result. Yeah. War is a result of our because system. If we only have representative democracy where we can vote for yeah. a representative every four years, it's really. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see what you're yeah. but that's not. Yeah, what I'm that's, saying that's, is. You were not saying the same thing, but yeah. I, I agree. I see your point. It's Switzerland or exactly. California yeah, if exactly. you want. Yes, yeah, Switzerland, Switzerland doesn't go to war, do they? Well, Switzerland was never conquered, but had some wars. Yeah. But they have large mountains and but there wasn't very an, difficult you know, to take over. And they have some gold in the bank. So, but Switzerland has a direct democracy which is a little different from the democracy we have very you can, different very diff if you prefer that i i, I don't, there's, there's not a, a fundamental difference between the two types of yeah. democracy i think it could work i just think in the system encourages i think it, in a large country with a complex society have i think it's difficult but been, uh, it can something work. you discussed in there or? no not here no. but i discuss it a lot of times at home we for instance we proposed a referendum law in the netherlands so to add to the representative democracy. I think that's actually the best way to have a representative democracy because you don't want to go out every day outside on a on a, on a parking space and vote. So would you support uh, a random around the world uh, demanding openness from Bilderberg? <laughs> Well, that would be nice, but I don't think it's, it's the, the most important issue to vote on. I think there's more important issues to vote. And you said a referendum around the world that requires referendum laws on every place of this earth. That's quite war. difficult. So but it, it's something to strive for. About what? But I, I remove secrecy myself. I don't have your vote for that. Well, thank you for that, but you're only one person. No, I'm myself. Only one power. And that is? Yes, this is. Objective, objective. No, no, no. Yes. You, you want well, to destroy I'm the government. Yeah. Okay, if it's, you, you let's, care, let's say if the it's the objective of that meeting, yes. I didn't discover it yet. They move after two everything, days. they move the war, they do what they want. You've you know? always back to the sides they... of the conflict. Yeah. You back Hitler and Churchill yeah. during the Second World War. Really? So that whoever wins is in your pocket. 
So who, that's who's, how you came? Who's your at the moment? What you say? What, who's your? Uh, uh, well, I am referring to Bilderberg Illuminati. Okay. We've always backed Bilderberg both sides was only of the conflict. After the war, eh? We've always backed both sides of the conflict. So that the winner would be in your pocket. But you have to speak to me, and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't born then. But oh, I of wasn't, course. I, I, but you I, I, must be aware I, 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 of the history. Bilderberg wasn't born either. Then. No, he was called Illuminati back then. He was Illuminati back then. But overall, Illuminati is that you're free and do you believe it's a good thing for the people to be free? Yes. Why don't you I think, think that's two very fundamental things that you just said there? It's, it's hard to agree on what the truth is all the time, though. And therefore, we have a democracy in which you discuss about what we just discussed climate change. And, and to be honest, expecting you here on this place, I, I expected uh, a group that was unisono of, um, of the opinion that climate change is something that we should try to prevent. That's ridiculous. And there we are. And we know it. Oh, that's so nice. We have to believe that you're lying. lying. How and, it, do, and do you agree with him all? Yeah. Do you all agree with him? Yeah. 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 So CO2 is not CO2 a no. problem. Do you guys no, think that IPCC is a good thing? Gas thing? Gas that gives it's life. IPCC a general yeah. life yeah. gas. We want you to speak. Well, no, I'm not going why, to speak in public. Why don't you think more people are coming out? Mr. Mr. Samson, why don't you think more people are coming out like you and trying to, you know, know, gauge us? I don't know. I, mean, I, I, you, I don't control are, them. Are they you, don't control me. Are you just, you know, have a positive outlook on us? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's the, up to you to judge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't or know. They don't want to engage. very us. negative outlook on you. Maybe you do. And that, I'm trying to gauge that, you that now. Would, then it would be a bad thing for me to be out here, eh? I don't know. No, your enemy. I think so. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Climate change is a Everybody hoax. who believes that the climate oh, change on. thing is a hoax, raise your hand. Please, give us the stream! It's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then we uh, democratically agreed that climate change is a hoax. Thank you. Thank you. Please, it's now official. <laughs> okay. But you would certainly be somewhat informed about the 9 11 situation, how it was uh, carried out, and who is behind the 9 11. No, it wasn't in you are not involved. Well, I'm, a, I'm so how can you go down on the If you were, you would not invited to the meeting. Of a <laughs> because it is very evident now no, by exactly all the scientific analysis of the 9-11 that the 9-11 was <laughs> actually engineered by a very small power group of elite people. Yeah, I read about who, that. Yeah, who had actually put explosives on all floors in the building. I saw the documentary. Yeah. Right. About that. And, and what's your opinion about I don't, this? I, I think it went in the... I went different. I think it, it was not the truth. What about okay. Building 7? Okay. It wasn't hit by any plane? It fell down in several hours. I don't think it was hit yeah. by a plane, was it? No, no not at all. It fell down in, in, in six seconds. Excuse me, sir? Since you are this uninformed about it, how can you then... I'm not uh, uninformed. How can you I'm then pretend... I'm informed about it, but I, I have you, a different you, opinion you, than you, you have. Sir, so sir, please, please, sir. What's your opinion about Building 7? I think there were two buildings that were taken down. Please, sir. He's only one man. Please, one person at a time. The other buildings were taken down by the... So the you are a sheep. Main building. You are five, definitely. With five, five, five hours later. Five hours later. Fire. Fire. Explosion. Explosion. Fire. Explosion. 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 Explosion.
like shit. Yeah, but is it appropriate to pump at 15 o'clock when Nils Harry knew for, uh, I don't know, 14 days that Nils Harry would come at 15 o'clock? And then when he's starting to speak. I have one hour, I have one hour to spare. I come here. Yeah. But I don't like to shout at you. So no, I don't I would like, like to speak. Like to speak but I, I couldn't get your attention from over here. No, so I, to I will ask you that. This is just but, ask me a question. But, yeah, why speak? Why speak? When Nils Harrod was okay. scheduled but to speak, guys, you pull all the dear friends. No, dear friends, I'm speaking, and I'm asking. Please, I do agree on who's speaking first. first. Yeah. Why did you come uh, when Nils Harrod was uh, scheduled to actually, speak? Actually, actually, I came all the here because I, I got a message from a journalist that I spoke yesterday, yeah. and he asked me to. Uh, come again. Oh, so that's why I come. Today. He got arrested today. Yeah. Uh, did he? Yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah. It's good. It's good. And I, I spoke Patient. to you yesterday. Maybe you also. did something wrong. Uh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I, that's the only reason. Yeah. I have one hour, and I already it already yeah. took 45 minutes now. So I've, I've only Mr. a few Samson, minutes left. What do you think about? So I want to um, answer questions. I want to speak to. I don't want to shout at yeah. people. So please don't give me that. What do you think about the press? You would like to arrive here by plane, right? Yes. Yes, it's lucky that the plane motor uh, or the jet engine didn't melt by the jet fuel, right? Yeah, it didn't. Because it took more than an hour to get here by plane. True. Yeah, and one hour, World Trade Center, the beams melted by jet fuel. Yeah, but it's he's, he's already material. stated his opinion on this. Can we ask, oh, when we, no, can we focus on builders? You don't burn the kerosene. In, an e in a jet engine like you do in a building. I mean, it's totally different. Yeah, but, but it I'm a politician. I have to admit I'm a politician, yeah. So, uh, but I was trained as an engineer. But you're an engineer. I'm an, en I'm an engineer, yeah, a nuclear engineer. So um, I don't know everything about it, like you. No. What's your Mr. Name? Samson. Samson. Uh, what do you think about the heavy presence of police? You had your turn a, lo a long time already, didn't you? I didn't. If there's somebody else wants to answer. Do you want to keep talking about 9-11 then? I want to. Mr. exist. No. It should, but if you if you define privacy as the right to be left alone, which is sort of a definition of privacy, at the moment none of us have it. Have it. No. Do we? No. no we choose. So that, that right it, it's difficult to preserve it in a world where everybody watches each other. You watch me at the moment with that, with that, with that thing and other people, and governments You're watch each other. Yeah, I'm a public figure. You uh, you are in a public I'm place. But you no, know, the problem is. Privacy, we, we, it's something that is precious and we should preserve it. But at the same time, we all use technology that is intrusive. Privacy. We, we, don't, we, all use we don't listen on to your phone calls. And now we have fun, we don't we listen to your phone calls. That's different. Exactly. That's we don't read your emails. We don't listen to your phone calls. I, I, we don't I touch don't do you it. at the airport. I don't do that either. I'm, no, I'm talking to system, you generally as part of a system yes. that does it, right? Yeah, I represent a system that does it. Yes. yes. What? How do you feel about that? And you're that? part of a system that does it. Unfortunately, I had no choice. I think it's a difficult discussion. I'm born into the system. I mean, we need information about criminals, terrorists. You, or or yeah. don't you think you need that information? You do, but you need to have sus you need to have direct suspicion. Yeah, that's not what I've heard. Well, it's it's through invading people's privacy. You can't have dragnet through surveillance. The constitutional laws that people have. No, you you shouldn't break break laws. They now have but somebody breaks the law every day, all the time. They have dragnet drone surveillance on whole cities. It's not difficult. Maybe you have to blame me. It's because on no, plain paper. No, no, no. I'm if you can read, you. you know it's you it's against the law. You have to blame me because I made work for. I, I'm responsible for laws that allow the secret agencies to look into stuff that you don't like. That's true. So you have to have you have to talk to me, not the secret agents. They they. Uh, they just buy do us. that job, just like yeah. the Nazis. Do, do you yeah. think? Do you think well, it's going to? And I'm with a lot because every government does this. Yeah, we're just doing our job. But that's it, no it, excuse. No, no, no. They, no, hold, hold on, hold on. If, if, a, if a policeman here just does his job, he's, he's not a Nazi. Yeah. He's still responsible. Depends on what he's doing. Well, uh, to the privacy debate. Just watching them, I think they're doing a good job. Do you think it's going to escalate? Where every citizen is going to have. Is civil disobedience is that a crime? No. 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 But the thing is, when people lay out this I did it. I did it for nine years in Greenpeace. Civil disobedience is part of democracy. What made you stop? But, but you have to do, you have to have a few conditions, but two most important. One is non-violent, always non-violent. If you, if you do civil disobedience, don't use any violence. And take responsibility for your, for your action. If you do something that is not allowed, you get arrested. 
pay the fine. But it's whatever. a lot of things that that's, are not that's, allowed that's now. That's the conditions. That's up to the policeman. No, that's the, police, the, police, the, police, the police decide what's no, not well, allowed it's anymore. It's in the end up to the judge, not the policeman. They, 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 they end up, people you end are up getting up shot over not having a license plate. decided by the judge. Or the, the district attorney in your country. The bigger question is, who is behind 9-11? Who is really behind the build-up? I think Osama bin Laden was behind 9-11. Not, not been loud, come on. I think you don't agree. Yeah, so, Rich, can I ask you a question? Yeah, you can. Why can't you people just but, leave but us there? Why, why, why start you by laughing at me? It's because not really... you mentioned Osama bin Laden. Okay. Osama and bin I still, Laden is I still an want Oswald. to answer your question. He's a patsy. Exactly. Who created Osama okay. bin Laden. And I still want to answer your question. The FBI and the CIA the created government Osama bin Laden to yeah. indirectly the Afghani... Militant, militant Islamism in order to create problems for Russia. So Russia would then be forced to invade Afghanistan and then you'd have a new situation. Just like when the CIA deposed and murdered Mossadi in Iran. What, what's your question? Well, why can't you just leave us alone? <laughs> why are we so damned important to you as debt slaves? Why are we so damned important But to you mean now, control? literally, so that I should walk away now? Why can't we have it's access possible. to what's going on in there? Uh, Why are the 200 like, plus because not every building is accessible to everybody. If I want to go into that building on the seventh floor, so I can't go in. Guys, so why don't you guys come is. out? I come out. Well, well, not what enough. level are you? Are you? Sorry what about that. Well, well, not enough. Not, not important. Oh, sorry? I don't ask anybody else something to do because they don't ask me. They don't ask me. What's on the seventh floor? Why can't you go on the seventh floor? Why can't you go on the seventh floor? Is it specific? Member of Parliament. Is it spe right. is this specific the specific meeting area? Can you about with the other building burgers? What are you discussing for What are they discussing the seventh um, floor? Well, loads of things. Ukraine, for instance. Yeah. Yesterday, Europe. Oh, yeah. Yesterday, uh, this morning, privacy. The way intelligence services gather information about all of us. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's that simple. Net surveillance. Yeah. 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 Well, we did. We didn't decide anything. We discussed it. What was the discussion? Sometimes like? you need to discuss the same before deciding. Sorry. We only decide in Parliament. Is it against the law? Sorry. Holland? You asked Rasmussen why the European. Uh, <laughs> you you is, smartly walked yeah, from that was, side uh, all the way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they died in American war in Afghanistan, yeah. and now NATO help. Uh, Al Qaeda in Syria. I don't think. No, I don't think no Al Qaeda, do. but the group close to Al Qaeda. May I ask see. him, please? How is this problem? I will ask him. If you, Mr. Sam, you, you said you, you're I'm not allowed on the seventh you. floor. Please take is there your friends up there? Please no, take no, that to your yeah. friends up there. Please. It's very important. You have to take Mr. Sam, I mean, is the narrow section down? It's not mine. It's yours. It's not mine. It's yours. You can't even come close. Mr. Sam, I don't think it will really help. Is the narrow section off? Is there like is there different floors for different subjects? No, no, no. Floors allowed. to sleep on, and there's, there's one. There's only one meeting room. Did you say something about the seventh floor, and you can't go there? Oh no, it was that building. Oh, I was just, building. I was okay. just pointing okay. at a bank. But is it against the law in Holland for a public uh, elected person to meet behind secret in secrecy no, behind doors? I do doors that every day. Everybody does that every day. But you do that every day. Well, I do that yeah, every but day. I, I'm not. But we like have no influence. Some, sometimes, in, in a discussion like uh, when you are discussing with somebody who's not a public person. He doesn't like to be confronted with a camera. And yet I want to know something. So I go to that person without a camera, out of the public, to know more about an issue. And then I come out and I, I'm responsible for everything I do myself but in public. So to, could to, there to, be disclosure afterwards, after the meeting? No, could there, there is. be written disclosure for the public? I'm, I'm not sure whether it? you want it in any form or whatever, written or on camera but could, or whatever. But there is a, I mean, could that, is every that a possibility? Member, every member here is, is responsible for his own actions. I'm for my actions, so uh, I talk about so what are you, I do. you're allowed to speak about what goes on in yeah. detail? Yeah. I'm not. We agreed with each other, and that's part of the rule that I just explained. We ex we agreed with each other that I wouldn't say anything about what another person said. I I'm only responsible for what I say and what I heard. That's interesting. That's an interesting way to put it. Well, that's that's Chatham House rules, as they call it. Uh, in, in a, in a sort of, it's country so. house. Uh, no, Chatham House. Rules. No, it's it's called Chatham House. <laughs> no. But it is a problem, <laughs> isn't it? it, it is no, it's well, it's also it's a dilemma. It's not a problem in itself, but it's 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 less transparent than you would want to. Exactly. But I need it, yeah, and, you, and you sometimes need it too. But we are your boss. Yeah. You're working for us. That's well, then you then you should impose a law that prevents me from going yeah, in. Yeah, but you're the one who makes the laws. No, no, no. 
no, no. You are my boss, so you just told me. Yeah. So you can tell me well, which law I have to make. The but first of all, care. you have to find a majority to take that. Exactly. But that's the problem with democracy. It is the arrogance also <laughs> from you. The problem with democracy is that you not always get what you want. Yeah, that's true. Never, I never. I have a better question. Um, <laughs> sorry, but. War, what does it help us? Nothing. Nothing. But why do we keep spending Crime. money on it? What does it help it? it? Is it well, still well, there? But why do we keep spending money on it? Why? Well, why can't we use because the... We want, we want to prevent war and sometimes you need <laughs> <But> to be... <laughs> you, you're to have an for that? Always, but you're, you're, you're talking you're about the entire world. Uh, you yeah, have the problem. control over the world. No, no, no. I don't have. I would like to, but I don't Your have. Your group? You would, would like to? Yeah. I'm almost just... Well, wouldn't you like to? No. Sir. Oh, yeah. You were the one that didn't want... Sir, can you use it uh, more in a better way like instead of military start uh, teaching people how to yeah uh, express himself without violence I was a, we actually need to kill a, people a long time I had a long time in my former years that I believed that you were completely right yeah. and then uh, Rwanda happened all right. um, and all our teaching and all what we did didn't help anything there were one was million people slaughtered in two months time yeah and I would love we send to be 10 able million, to, to 10 million. I would have wanted that we could prevent that. And to, in order to prevent that, we needed to send people there with weapons yeah, but to stop it. You can so stop it before to the yeah, 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 you're right. And I know how. That's it. Oh, well, 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 thanks for that judgment. Belgium, what about anyway. thinking about psychology? Every pe uh, person's need. What if you are starting to fill them about people who need water, yeah, people yeah. who need... A, Shelter. But maybe yeah. sometimes like we fill in that. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. We fill in that. every day we fill. All the money we actually waste on military yeah. instead of actually putting it. Without the democratic taxpayer system, in, in, we wouldn't be able to fund world, these wars. I would completely agree with you, but yeah. the world isn't perfect. Can't we make the world perfect? Well, we try. Yeah. You try. You I try. try. So you, can can you, 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 you don't try that. Yes, of course I do. Well, but you do it on the wrong way. Well, no military industrial so. complex yeah. only exists because of the democratic process. The majority. Yeah. That's the problem. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I, think I can see that. I can yeah. tell from the world. But you can tell from the five minutes that you've met me? No, not you personally. I know, of course. But who's then you? The, the you are changing year Who's then you in your... In your in you're your you're here this year because somehow they... Oh, you mean Bilderberg? Uh, Bilderberg, yeah. Okay. There's all kinds of different people at Bilderberg. Yeah, every year. You're you here this year because they have somehow decided that you are helpful in the plan this time. Well, I'm not really helpful. Yeah, that's a I don't know. Change. You're making, you're making a, a few policemen a little nervous because you're coming closer into me. Uh, uh, okay, I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. I don't mind. But we were I, just, I just tell you, we're not dangerous. Last thing we are what they call harm. Yes. Depopulating. I thought it sounded like eugenics. Can you uh, explain again? Well, it was just a discussion about the fact that, for instance, in Denmark and in the Netherlands, but also in loads of other Western and also China and Japan, people get more, get older every year, the life expectancy rises, which is a good thing because it has to do with health and welfare, etc. But it also poses some problems for society as a whole. And politicians are re politicians are what appointed, are elected what to solve problems? those problems. Pensions, mm -hmm. the fact that we have a, uh, a smaller workforce and more retired people, the fact that we have less children and more retired people. It's not a problem, but it's a challenge for society to ad adapt. And we need to adapt in order to face that challenge. That I mean, was the only that discussion. Immigration? Well, uh, immigration would be a solution or part of a solution for that, but not everybody agrees. European cultures even more. So even more. Well, I like a diverse. I like a diverse society. Yes, but I know there's people that don't like it. Do and then we disagree. Is it, is it the government's job to take care of uh, its citizens? Sorry. Is the government's sole purpose to take care of its citizens? It should be. And how do we actually actualize that? Well, by voting as a way if we don't. So every four years you have the chance to say, well, you are not acting in the general interest, you go away. You think that's been successful so far? Well, it's the best system we have, with loads of flaws and loads of mistakes, but I haven't found a better system yet. Well, maybe well, we I don't can think we've been allowed to. Uh, uh, no, maybe we can not allowed say, to opt okay, out. We all get in there at one point. I've heard about systems who have tried that. 
You right. mean all together? Yeah, we we, did, we already discussed direct democracy. Yeah. So we're going to stand on the parking lot and we just decided that climate change is a hoax. Okay. That oh was basically God. the science. Global, global warming. The climate has global always warming. changed. Sorry. The climate has always changed. It is not man-made. It's you not man-made. I mean, sorry. CO2 to okay, I will be more. I will be more precise. Man-made global warming is a hoax. Capitalist. According to you, yeah. I don't agree with you. Capitalist. But I'm a I'm a very small minority yeah, here. No, I, I just have to yeah. have to admit. Talk about global warming to climate change. That was a peculiar change in discourse. Yeah, I don't think so. That there's people like you and others who found out that your scam was perhaps not going so well with that. Well, I'm 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 starting to talk about some. I'm I'm I'm. Let's try to agree uh, on something. I'm starting to talk about something else, a new energy future. I mean, even if man-made global chimes, uh, climate change would be a hoax, uh, oil and gas, we're running out of it. So we have to find new ways to produce our energy. Do you agree? Do you yeah. think well, then we can then we can start working because that's actually the only way we we can. Don't act you think on the best change. way is to open up the market, uh, free markets competing against each other to make a profit from the best uh, energy source that provides the most energy for the less. Sometimes, least sometimes cost. it's a solution, but you have you have to be careful with it. Shouldn't but it's free. part of the solution. We saw it with Chinese solar panels. A market was opened up between China and the rest of the world, and solar energy became a lot cheaper. Because so sometimes market it mechanisms work. If governments are working with companies and they're doing favors and doing backdoor deals with certain corporations and that, not others, then it closes not, up Mark, the market. That was not what we were discussing. But we I'm asking, if that else. happens, right, that's then not going to create wrong. progress because it's going to uh, stagnate the market. It's and if not a government develop uh, yeah. the price uh, But if decrease. a government does that, you are allowed to send that government away. Yeah. I hope so. If it's a democratic government, then we're back to, to democracy. I'll write you a letter when that comes up. Can we do something about it? Uh, like, for example, make a limit on how much yeah, we have to, uh, a I mean, single person I'm a social, have I'm a social say, democrat. Okay, I, have, I, I sincerely believe that you, you have to... Can you let me talk finish, yeah. please? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, what if we make a limit on capitalism and say, you can earn this much. That's socialism. And yeah. Yeah, then socialism. say, okay, we have this pile of money nice and idea. we actually spend this money on the people who don't have it. Yeah. Good idea. So we no. can make uh, because that money will wealth. never go to exactly. the people. It will uh, never go to the people. Not, uh, working on why someone Well, someone some be difference in income will in be inevitable, I think. But they shouldn't become too big. Yeah. You're right. Why should so someone you need, have a you need a right to live? You need a government to, to, for instance, impose taxes on rich people so that we can. Give some why money shouldn't to rich people, people make their money that they have earned? <laughs> I think you have to discuss yeah. with each other <laughs> because I don't think you agree with her. But you agree with him. Sorry about that. <laughs> you have a past as in an agent of environmentalism. Uh, what's your view on such being a smart grid? It's a nice way of uh, doing demand side management, meaning that we have to we use less energy if we have a smarter it's a energy grid. A system that potentially can be Orwellian in its structure. Yes, it's That's exactly. It's big data collection. That's exactly one of the downsides. Yes, <laughs> but there's also some positives. Of course, uh, and now we have to wait them and uh, an absolute negative. Precisely. And when you look at and that's why that's uh, why you, you weight the positives and the negatives. I think you can um, handle the the privacy problems with it, but if you don't, we have a real problem. So if you, don't you do, in decentralized solutions yeah, yeah. I, but but a smart grid is in a sense also a decentralized solution, but in a bigger system. And then you go with your argument about privacy. And you're right. You're right. That's something we need to take care of. Is there a question about what you're talking about in there? I mean, are there some of the big, the real important question, for example, that the bees are dying. I mean, that is something that really matters. You talked a bit about privacy. I mean, I would imagine you talked about how we can decrease the privacy. Yeah. I mean, that we still have some left that, for example, we know it cures to what cancer. Do you, I mean, the pharmaceutical. Why do you think the bees are dying? Because of uh, Chemicals? environmental pollution, uh, yeah, okay. maybe a radiation from mobile phones. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I was just, I was just peculiar because you thought man-made global warming was a hoax. But on this side, we are on the same side. I, I yeah, do think we have to I be careful with chemicals. I believe a lot of pollution that a lot of shit uh, companies do. But I mean, these are the real issues. Also about privacy. Some yes, about how we, we discussed it. Disease. I mean, we discussed it. Industries they don't really help us. Most of us know that by now. That cures to cancer. That cures to almost any disease. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, if this coming out to the people. Let, put, let me give you another dilemma. If you want to cure cancer, uh, suppose that you can, you need big data. 
for it. What? You need very big data for You're it. You're going to water fast. No, you, you, need, you, need to have, you need to know why cancer is existing and what kind of... You need a scientific database of enormous amount. Mm -hmm. And there you are again. We have cured other things. You well, well yeah, but we haven't cured cancer. Working quite we, we haven't human. cured cancer. Cured you surrender? No, no, the pharmaceutical industry has not. could be one of the uh, solutions, but not for everybody. You I cannot know, cure all, everybody. But you I'm cannot cure you. all cancer with cannabis. No, I'm sure. I'm sorry about that. What, what no, specifically are you bringing to Bilderberg this year? Sorry? What specifically are you bringing to Bilderberg this year? Uh, myself. But why, why, <laughs> not why more you are not a different politician? I think uh, what, what, they, what they always do, they, it's Europe and the US, and it's the Bilderberg sort of tradition and from every European country they, they ask somebody from uh, they scientists you they ask us, a specific experience there's a Dutch in scientist field. in there there's some Dutch business people and some Dutch politicians and that's for our, all countries right. so basically you try to have a mix and it's sort of randomly selected I'm not important so Do they need I'm you randomly a selected or a nuclear engineer? I'm a politician and just that's by accident, I'm also a nuclear engineer. How do you, how do you become invited? I, I, I was trained as a yeah. nuclear engineer. <laughs> they were so random. Why have I never what, been invited? What is your view, especially <laughs> as an environmentally interested scientist, what is your view on the fluoride, that we have fluoride all around us in our toothpaste? Which was not toothpaste. democratically voted uh, for to be implemented. That was used by uh, Nazi Germany on the uh, It was first used in the gulag, in the Russian gulags uh, too. To make people docile. Yeah. Uh, what, why do we have that in our toothpaste? And why is that so spread around the, the world. Drinking water in different food products and different yeah. products that well, we it has, it has. Is that a problem from it? No, fluoride, in, fluoride has also some positive effects on Not your teeth. Well, first they said it was internal, then they said it was hold external. Hold on, hold on, please. <laughs> Some positive effect on your teeth, yes. so basically that's why it's in toothpaste. But it has also some negative effects. Big difference. And they, that, that's where the. That, and if you think you should regulate it out of our food, there's loads of stuff that is regulated out of our food. But the fluoride problem is could be one of them. If you vote on my, it my in the Netherlands or in Europe, we, we regulate it out of our food. It. Isn't that an issue that the democratic process didn't? Uh, Sometimes vote it works the other way around. Sometimes you you vote issue? to you, you vote to to get something but out of it. Isn't that <laughs> that is not like the complete opposite of democracy when something's imposed on you and then you have to fight to get it out. Well, Shouldn't we have had a say whether it's a floor or water? I don't think you have a problem with fighting for something, don't you? Yeah, but I'm losing. No. <laughs> I lose every day my fight, and so you win some too, don't you? you That's not democracy, though, yes. to vote something I out. Do. I do. I'm not a fan. Uh, and so then I'm going away. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm granting this Sodium lady did last night. Sodium yeah. fluoride is synthetic, extremely toxic. Mm -hmm. toxic. I know. The, the natural fluoride is called calcium fluoride. Why is that? Why are you not using that one? It's not dangerous. I'm, I'm using Prodent. I'm not sure what kind of fluoride is in there. Because it's not bad. It doesn't they make anyone money. Can you hear your name again? Prozac. You, you know more about that than I do. Prozac. Again? Samsung. Hi. SSRIs are filled with sodium fluoride because it makes you docile. I, I hear him think, who the f hell is Did you hear what I said? <laughs> That's correct. There's loads of people in there that you think, who the hell is Antidepressants he? Antidepressants well, I'm one of filled What's with fluoride. I'm one. Samsung is my last name. Diederik is my first name. I'm from the Netherlands. You're from the Netherlands. <laughs> yes. And, you're and you think, who the hell is he? Well, there's about 130 people in there, and you know a few of them, but most of them are just well, like me. Actually, I don't Not really care, but I just wanted you to make sure that you answered this lady's question because they were I, actually. I don't Why have the answer. Why is antidepressant filled with fluoride? I don't have the answer. I don't know. I have. I'm sorry. It makes you docile. Okay. And that's why you do see that. I will get into that. The issue there I will is promise I will get into that. I, in I learn every day. Yeah? Right? Yeah. We question. should have had a Last say in what to okay. intake, As take into our bodies. Greenpeace, former Greenpeace activist. Yes. Why are you part of this? Because I joined uh, politics, because I think democracy is a way to change things, and we don't agree on that. Everybody here, some of you do. And part of democracy, part of being a politician, is that I try to become better every day. And therefore, you sometimes go into a hotel room with scientists and business people, and sometimes you stand on a parking lot with loads of people around you with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and both both events make me a little better. Thank you. See you. Goodbye, guys. You can see how the opinions were mostly clashing against each other, with both sides being very keen on their particular views. Nevertheless, I appreciated that Diederik Samson did come out to communicate because I think that communication is of key importance. It is a universal solvent. 
Interestingly, one woman from Copenhagen that I talked to asked me if I don't think that it's a positive thing that all these people at the Bilderberg conference come together to communicate. I answered that this was my first thought as well when I first heard of the group, but when I found out more about who founded the Bilderberg group and what agendas are being pushed there, I became suspicious. However, I still like the idea of people coming together to communicate, and I think there's great leverage in this. My positive experiences in communicating with locals at the scene motivated me to now put forth a challenge to you, the viewers of this film. I challenge you to create an epic show of communication at the next Bilderberg meeting. Of course, the Bilderbergers themselves would hardly talk to me or you. Many of them walked past me as I stood a few meters from them outside the fence at the Marriott, but it was abundantly clear that they had no intention whatsoever to talk to me or even look my way, and when they were asked something by some of the other reporters, they would just walk on. There were a few exceptions, but mainly there is not much communication between the Bilderbergers and outsiders, and if there is a communication, it's essentially a clash of strongly opposed sentiments. The Copenhageners and the police, however, were much more open-minded from what I have seen. So what if demonstrators would gather with the intent to communicate with the police or any locals that are passing the scene? What if we would just be present, open and ready to communicate? It's like this phenomenon where one or more people point to the sky, others will stop, look and inquire about what's going on. I want to encourage you to communicate with whoever is not a demonstrator at the scene. This should be done in a civilized way, not harassing anybody, but being present and available for communication. We as demonstrators could start some kind of giant improvisational theater show by filming this, thus we would have numerous perspectives on this as we communicate with the different individuals and factions that are present at the scene. The presence of a great number of cameras filming this would also make it easier for everybody to talk on camera as no one is really singled out, it would be a group experience and a big thing. The communication should be moderated by the participants themselves. A good way would be to have a person from within the ranks of the demonstrators make one comment or ask one question to which the police or a local person could reply to or not. Then the person who spoke would designate the next speaker and so on. This way, everybody has a say while also having time to reflect and remain calm despite the significance that this kind of interaction could have. It could be an iconic show of how decent, civilized and constructive behavior works in practice. The Bilderbergers and all those that see themselves as the rulers of humanity rely on the police forces to protect them and on the general population to be oblivious or indifferent. Now, if the demonstrators would engage the police and the locals in the way that I just described, we could erode the power base of the Bilderbergers and also show it to the world by producing epic pieces of art, as the interaction would be filmed by many demonstrators from their unique points of view. These videos could be marked with a particular tag, and compilations could be produced by combining these videos. Engaging the people at the scene in such a way breeds the potential for remarkable encounters and conversations that could have a great effect on those watching them all over the world. It would be highly educating and inspiring. Even if the police would be specifically ordered not to communicate, this would still be fuel for some epic situations and videos. Who knows? This could become the greatest improvisational communication ground on the planet and Bilderberg could become known as the place where such a great experiment is being conducted and it would attract more and more people every year because of this event that we create. Why not create such a piece of beauty and art when we're there anyways? Ask yourself in which lies greater leverage, shouting at Bilderbergers or communicating with those that did not come to protest the Bilderbergers but who are there at the scene nonetheless. I for one had my share of shouting at this year's conference. Next time I want to create the Bilderberg Improv Theater and I want to invite every one of you watching this to join in and make it an event that inspires and touches people and also reaches those that are hesitant to learn about Bilderberg through the material that is available at the moment. After all, I believe that it's our common goal to educate ourselves and each other and to encourage everybody to participate in life, to communicate, to create and to become empowered. Let's try it through art, beauty, conversation and making friends. And be prepared to listen, because this is 50% of communication. Listen to what will be said to you, think about it, and do your best to help elevate the communication to a higher level. Let's invade Bilderberg with cameras and with a willingness to communicate with everybody.